Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday, it's September 18th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and you can see um, the day hasn't quite closed yet, but it looks like it's going to be a real neutral range kind of day. We just continue to kind of chop sideways here, and you can see how flat everything's getting. Um, we're just working sideways is really all we're doing. We get a big day up and a big day down. We just can't seem to get any traction in either direction. So, but you'll see as we flip over to the 2000 tick chart, it looks very similar to this, just kind of a range type day. And here we are, here's a look at our 2000 tick chart. And you can see we're just working sideways. We did look like we were gonna go higher for a little bit, but we failed on the breakout. It took a little while here struggling trying to go higher before it finally sold off and we closed just slightly north of what I would call the midline of the majority of the early price action there so uh, you can see we're still working off this midline on kind of on both sides here so uh, I believe this early range was the, uh, pretty much contained the overnight highs and uh, we actually made a higher low here uh, into the open after we opened so I kind of use that we had more touches across here so that's why I'm not using the very lows and kind of worked our way up here um, but um, anyway uh, not a lot of trades today there's a few it's hard to trade this stuff especially I mean, on a range day, you really want to buy the lows down here and sell the highs. And we didn't get a lot, lot of opportunity for that. So, uh, I mean, it is wide enough here that if you get some trends up or trends down, you can try to trade those. But uh, uh, just not much happening here. So, um, anyway, I'm going to zoom in here. We'll go through the trades. 7 o'clock came right in here after this big move down. Um and notice how we're way away. I marked this blue, but it's really, it really probably should be green. I'm, I'm going to change it. I liked it in real time, and so I marked it blue. But the more I thought about it, it, it probably needs to be marked green because it is a little aggressive. Notice we got the channel working down. We get a close outside, and we don't quite get a new high, uh, low here. We make a higher low, but we're so far away from the EMA. Odds are we're probably going to retest this high right here. And this line wouldn't have been here at this point. It would have been down here. And you can see why. It looks a little different there. I like it the way it looks there. Just to ride it back to the EMA. Uh, there's plenty of room to test that high. Um, I mean, and we could bottom out here. I mean, it's a failed break out of this early tight range up here as well. I didn't mark any of that. But this was just a tighter range. And so there's some reasons to like that. Uh, Again, it probably should be green. I originally marked it blue. I liked it in real time. Um, quick, easy trade early this morning. If you saw it, great. If you didn't. And then we just kind of chop sideways. Uh, it's tempting to go short, and then it's tempting to go long, but you just don't know what prices are doing here. We did get a break of this green channel and a new high, and you would expect prices to uh, probably um, retest this low. But it doesn't end up happening before we make another leg up. And so you just, it's just hard to look how flat that is when we're on both sides of it. It's really difficult to know what prices are doing. I think you're better off just to sit and wait. And then they do rock it up. And you get a reversal type. You're, you're making, you, you get a close outside and a couple legs up. You make a lower high. But it's on the wrong side of the EMA. It looks a little congested. You do get another push up here which maybe you treat that as a reversal. It's not really a great place for one right in the middle of, of what looks like a range. So um, I, I did not mark that, and I don't think you really want to try to take that. Uh, but it drops down, you get a close outside and you low, and then we're just kind of chopping sideways. Again, I don't think you want to go long there. It looks a little congested. There is a first entry, second entry long. And maybe you look at that as a triple test. Uh, we even tested it over here. If you, the problem is there's not much room back to that EMA. Uh, I mean, maybe you risk that, but I think you're better off to wait. And notice how we finally push up. We pull back. We get a first entry, and then we turn down. And plus, this plays out. You get the channel coming down. You get a close outside. 
new low and it reverses. This does close above the EMA, so if it breaks higher, there's a good chance we're going higher. It does kind of chop around a little bit, but it runs on up. Um, you didn't get a runner. It comes back and runs the stops here. You get a second entry here, but um, this is too neutral to, to use for a signal bar. And so I think you have to sit tight there. And, of course, then you're just chopping sideways. Um, I marked this one. At this point, the, your, your range probably would have been a little higher. And so maybe you take that as a bounce off the lows. Um, I ended up making it a little larger once we made these other two closes. They're a little bit lower. But at that point, maybe you take that. Definitely, I like the blue one here. Plenty of room to scalp out. Um, and like I said, then I would have probably adjusted this down over here like so. Uh, we do run to the top, come back. And there's a second entry there. Pretty decent bar. As long as you got room to scalp out, I think there just is six ticks there. It doesn't matter. It ends up going higher. But you won't. You don't know that it's going to push through. In general, you're not expecting it to push through. You're expecting it to keep, keep doing what it's doing here. Although we did have a failed break lower, which might lead to a break out the other side. So there's some reasons to like that entry there. I marked it green. It's not ideal. Um, but maybe you take that trade. And of course, it fails out the top. And you get a lower high with a fairly decent signal bar. I like taking that one back. There's another lower high here, but you don't have much room right there. It's not room to get out. Then, of course, it bounces again. Um, I didn't mark this one. I didn't like it because it didn't break higher above this bar. You just get an inside bar. So to trade it, you got to trade this bar breaking above an inside bar. And it's right into the midline with three bar matching high. If it breaks higher, it's probably going back to the top. But I don't think you want to risk that. It's just it's risky. Um, and then, of course, we do end up going higher and getting a breakout up the upside. But notice the green channel. You get a close outside. You try to go higher once, twice, three times. It does make a new high uh, when you'd rather, you know, when it does that, you might want to wait on a lower high. It still closes well inside, so maybe you take that one. Uh, there's not a lot of room there to scalp out, but this is played out, and you're so far away from the EMA, there's still a good chance we could come back to the EMA. And maybe even reverse, because most breakouts fail, so you're kind of expecting this breakout to fail anyway. Uh, comes back and bounces here. Uh, runs out, runs out the other side. You might have still continued to kind of drag this over. And I would have probably adjusted it just a little bit like that right there. And once again, you get another failed breakout. I didn't mark this one, because again, you get an inside bar. Uh, you do get a lower high here. And another lower high, so maybe you take, maybe you take this one here. Again, I didn't mark it. Um, maybe you take that because if, if you're still looking, it's still playing the range, and there's still plenty of room there. Oops, got an upside down green. Ooh, that one. I definitely probably wouldn't take this one because it looks congested. I'd wait and see, and then, but that one, maybe you take that one. There's a third one here, but you don't have any room to scalp out right there. Uh, it doesn't end up matter. It drops on down, but I still wouldn't take it. And I wouldn't go long here yet either. Um, and, of course, now you get a break of your green one, new high, and nice signal bar. I like going short there because you're, you're, you're right back at that resistance again across there. And... Uh, good for a scalp and then it just kind of chops sideways uh, this one's tempting but there's not enough room to scalp out before those lows and it's really congested I just sit tight and when it comes back here and kind of confirms that trend line right there it actually breaks higher first and turns down I like trading that back into the range uh, and this one takes off it turns out to be a really nice trade right there uh, and there was a little bit of a trap there as well um, we get a break here. I don't know about going back long this way when we're in a downtrend. I just kind of sit tight. And you really never get another chance to go short here until we're into 230. That one's tempting. Uh, we do have a break in a new high, but a lot of times you get two legs. We're not back to the trend line yet. So you got to be real careful with that one. 
And if this would have made a good signal bar, maybe you go short there, but you just can't trade that signal bar. And this one's right at, notice it breaks higher and turns and goes down. You might trade that as a failure. Uh, there is a new high there, first entry, second entry. So that would be a continuation pattern. It doesn't really continue very far, but it would have been good for a scalp, especially if you traded it. If you waited for that to close, I would not take that bar. But if you saw it on the engulfing bar as a failure, I'd be okay with that. I mean, it's, you know, even though it's at 230, it's like right at. 231 so uh, I wouldn't have a problem taking that trade on a failure which is that's a failure continuation pattern in a larger trend there uh, when you're expecting prices should try to probably I mean we are right at the midline that's another reason for it to be green but I mean you can't argue with that trend channel we do get a break here but it's so late in the day you know there's no chance for it to come back and retest the lows so so there it is. Not a lot of trades. There's a couple of, uh, there's enough there that you got to be able to find a trade. You had to be real patient. First really good trades right around nine o'clock. So not much happening in there prior. This was a possibility. I, I mean, I like that one in real time. I still marked it green because it's aggressive, but I really liked it in real time. And so there it is. Again, when you're trading these ranges, you're looking, your best setups are going to be off the lows of the range or off the highs on fail breakouts and things like that. so you did get a couple opportunities up here but just not we just never really got back down to the lows again so um, this thing started to look more bullish up until we turned up back down right here so anyway that's how I saw it and there's just not much you can say about today it's just a kind of a weak range day with no direction prices are just mixed and chopping around and you know you can get big runs in both directions in just a few minutes and get chopped all to pieces. So you got to be real careful on these days. So uh, somebody else asked me about that, you know, is boring when it's boring like this, you know, it's hard to sit there without getting distracted and doing other things. And, and you don't want to be distracted when you're trading. And sometimes on days like this, you know, if you sit here till nine or 10 and you hadn't got much going, it's probably just, don't be afraid to just get up and call it a day and come back tomorrow. You'd much rather come back flat without having lost anything, even though you didn't make any money, than come back tomorrow as a loser because you forced to trade because you were getting bored and antsy. And that's what separates amateurs from professional traders. A professional trader is not afraid to get up and walk away and say, hey, it's not happening, and I'm not going to sit here all day and and get tempted into a bad trade. I'm just going to call it a day, and I'll come back tomorrow, and there'll be, you know, Maybe tomorrow will be a great day. And, you know, if you have a great day, if you do that, get up and walk away a day or two in a row because there's not much happening in the market and you come back and you have a great day, then maybe make up for the other two days by trading, taking an extra trade or two if it's a really strong trend. So just keep that in mind because that's really the difference between being close and being almost break even to break even versus being profitable. That's usually the real difference is your ability to be disciplined and have patience and just simply wait on a sure thing instead of forcing something that you're not real sure about. What an amateur will do is they're looking for an entry on every single swing here. A professional, they're, they're looking at this and saying, okay, you know, once I, I know I'm in this range, I'm looking for a setup down here or a setup up here to go short. One down here, and once you break out, okay, I'm looking for something in this range or in this uh, trend here. And then once we break out over the top, okay, I'm going to look for a failure to maybe get short or back it once we get back to the trend line to get short. And they're waiting on that to happen. If it doesn't happen, they just keep waiting. Where an amateur, they're just every swing, they're looking for an entry. And then they wonder why they have losers. So keep that in mind. Uh, okay, I can make the difference between being almost break even to break even versus uh, being profitable. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm feeling better this week. I'm kind of getting back to normal. So um, I mean, I was pretty sick for five to six days there. Uh, first three or four days were really sick. Uh, that was a tough uh, bout of COVID I had. So appreciate all the emails and well wishes, but I'm good. I'm I'm pretty much back to 
normal. I, I don't I don't think I'm 100% full strength, but uh, I'd say I'm 90, 95, and, and probably by I'm feeling better every day still. So anyway, uh, hope you had a good trading day. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next.